Okay guys, welcome back. So following on from the iron fit we've just completed uh, with Marquez, we're gonna look into wedges for you now. Um, a part of your game when we were chatting earlier on, you mentioned is, is kind of probably the strongest part of your game, get closer to the greens. Yeah, I think my putting is probably my strongest, mm -hmm. which I'm really happy about. And then my wedge game is decent enough that if yeah. I can get into a good putting position, I'm okay, I can save myself. Love it. Now, I think people watching again, hearing you say that after watching how you strike the ball will be, will be kind of maybe shocked as to say that that's the, the strength, but um, that's more, I would say that's more encouraging that if you hit it like you have done so far, mm -hmm. and we can get some wedges in your bag that complement that. I mean, it's just stacking, you know, performance on top of performance at this point. Yeah. Tell me about your current wedge setup. Yeah, a little mismatch, but I have, my iron set goes down to a pitching wedge, and then mm -hmm. I have a 56, which I, it's like this matte black, pretty sure it's a Titleist wedge. Right. Uh, an old sand wedge, and then a 64. So when you're pretty sure it's a Titleist wedge, you, I'm very sure there's not much rhyme or reason to what is in the bag for wedges. Yeah. Yeah. So um, that's, that's awesome. Um, the 64 that you carry, do you enjoy that one, or is that one, does it cause more problems than it solves? It was a fun toy when I got it. Right. I don't use it very much. I okay. kind of try to stick to the 56 with almost everything like 95 yards and in. Sure. But if it's a, a steep face of a bunker yeah. or something like that, then I'll break out the 64. And I actually feel pretty comfortable with it. Okay. But I don't, I maybe use it once or twice around. Yeah. That, and that's not bad for, I mean, it is your get a jail free card, isn't it? When yeah. you're, you really, you've got nothing else to um, help you overcome that short-sighted miss, uh, yeah. whether it's over a bunker, in a bunker, like you say. Um, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna kind of start at that end of the bag because really the loft progression will depend on whether we go 64, 62, 60, whatever mm -hmm. we end up doing. Um, in my mind already, I'm sort of thinking, uh, based on what we've done with the irons, that I'd like the wedges to look something like 62, 56, and 50. So we have six degree progressions. That's based on how far you were hitting your irons and we're trying to bring your flight down. Mm -hmm. So thinking that we probably will have about 45 degree pitching wedge, then go to 50, uh, 50, then go 56, 62. Okay. So that's what I'm thinking. All right, let's, let's start with uh, the 62 and see if we think that's a good play. I just feel like I want to like my mental space was like, I want to get really comfortable with this one wedge. Yeah. So I can just manipulate it to bump and run, flop, cut, whatever. Yeah. If you have minimal time to invest in your short game, master one club is, is, is a really, really yeah. good move. Either master one club or master one way to play the shot and use multiple clubs that same way right. to alter trajectory, right? So. You know, if, if you're going to do that, then play in a pretty basic middle of the stance ball position, handle not too far forward, fairly vertical, and then just go from eight iron up to 16, just, just change the, the flight yeah. is, is another good way to do it. But simplifying is definitely a good thing. All right, so when it comes to these high lofted clubs, we're really not worried about how far they go. It's more about, you know, those little trouble shots. So. Let's start nice and close to the green at like 25 yards. 25 yards. Yeah. Get a max Pretty caliber. good. Yeah, excellent. I mean, you couldn't play that basic little pitch and run any better than that. Okay, let's stretch you back a little bit and see mm -hmm. how sort of versatile that, that sole grind is for you. So let's go, let's go kind of 30 yards and go the aerial route. Okay. Really nicely done. So if we get it coming in like that, we'll get a lot more spin on it. Okay. All right, so uh, just a little bit of a change to the type of shot. Yeah, and, and how we're kind of using the club a little bit as well. So when we open the club up, we expose a little bit more of that bounce. This isn't a club with high amount of bounce, so if we open it up nicely as well, we're, we're going to get to use the sole a little bit more. That was, that was fantastic. Nice little jump. You'll get a lot more spin. 
Let's do the same again. I mean, that when you did use the bounce, you could sort of hear it, yeah. the early entry. That was, that was really nice. And with your current 64, Marquez, would you ever really play a full shot? Not a full shot. No. no. no this I, is I'm only chipping or flopping short shots with it. Up until what yardage? Like this type of thing, 30? 40 tops. 40 tops. Yeah. Okay, so let, let's see that max range, see what it does. At this point, we, we probably will be kind of hitting, you know, it'll just be drop and stop. Yep. That's a beauty. So good. You play that shot really nicely. You've Thank got, you. You've very, very, very good hands for, uh, for those types of shots. I mean, again, you know, don't want to keep harping on about how little you play, but for, for not playing too much golf, you can see how much you did put in as a kid. Yes. Right? The game was built from putting to chipping Definitely. and out for 100%. me, for sure. Like the, the little nuances of how you shallow your, your pitch shots really, really nicely. You're, you're really not a big divot taker, which is good. Um, so you, you're taking a little bit of turf, but you know, certainly not, not hitting down too steep on it at all. Uh, I like that 62 for you. I, yeah. I think that's a, a, a nice little variety of shots that you can play with it. Um, I think if you open it up and, and you, you needed to flop something as well, you have no trouble doing that. Okay, let's go into more of the kind of bread and butter, and this is yeah. where we start to look at the, the sole design. I've got two 56s, the full, uh, full sole 12 degree of bounce, the mid sole 10 degree of bounce. I'm gonna start with the full sole because we, we did see some, we talked about the, the divot size. We, we know that when you hit full shots, you, you can get a fraction on the steeper end, so let's hit some of this. All right, so let's go comfortable then at 100, kind of that. Nice 75, 80% swing. Excellent. Toes down. The toes a little down, yeah. Okay, so give me a couple more with a little bit more speed, mm. a little more aggressive. Get a full wedge. Yeah. I noticed that that got to 12 degrees. Yeah. <clears throat> so the more, it has a lot to do with your, with your strong grip. It would, if you were a, a chronic slicer and the toe was down, it would be a much, much bigger problem. Gotcha. right between those. Okay, a little bit hit or miss uh, with, a, with that 56. Yeah. I'm gonna move you into a, a Voki SM9. So this is actually 5412 bent um, two degrees weak so we get more bounce. Okay. So some of those high strikes, Marquez, are because we, we don't quite have enough bounce. So we've got quite a steep angle of attack um, we're hitting a little bit behind it. So that's what moves the strike up the head. That was pretty good. So for me, immediately when we start to see the spin rate kind of regulate, obviously your carry distance regulate. The one thing we had no control of over the, with the zip core was how far it was gonna go. Mm -hmm. it, it, you know, could easily go 90, could easily go 110. Um, this is much, much more like it. Way less variable. So far, so good. Excellent, excellent, excellent. 
Okay, let's uh, let's dial the yards back a little bit. Let's go to 75 yards, so a nice three-quarter uh, sand wedge. So this is the type of shot like I find myself hitting a lot. Yep. The not full swing mm -hmm. wedge, trying to have the right touch. Um, so this is this is standard length. We will build them half over for you, Marquez. So yeah. same uh, same to match your uh, your iron set. Does it feel a hair short? I feel like my wedges have always felt a little yeah. short. It's like I'm standing a little close. Yeah. Love it. It's got a chance. Bye. Yeah, I think immediately when I saw the full shot consistency, you look very comfortable with these partial swings, like a little three quarter, 56. I think going 54 bent a little bit weak so that uh, it adds a little bit more bounce. <clears throat> I think for softer conditions, I mean, probably very seldom do you play in really firm conditions. It's usually softer. Low, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Okay, let's, yeah. uh, let's stick to that. All right, so this one is much more about the, the full shot distance with a 50. Okay. Is 120, is that about fair for what you do outside with gap wedge? Yeah. Good. That's nice. Thanks. Similar. Was that intentional to hit a little bit of right to left? No. No? No. Path moved a little bit more into out there. Okay. That one felt like I would have chunked it. Yeah, a little, uh, little high up the head. Okay, same thing as we done with uh, the 54. We're actually going to go a little bit stronger and weaken off again just for that little bit extra bounce. Basically, bounce um, is what we use to regulate strike height. When that strike starts to get too high, we need, we need to basically um, put more of the sole into the, into the ground so that there's, there is some resistance, right? So if we let that club sink too deep into the ground, it's very easy to hit it high. The more bounce we have, the more resistance we have to that dig, that depth, right. that's what strikes it much, much lower. Okay. So you start to kind of, you know, feel the strike more solid. What's always surprised people when they hear that you should actually strike a wedge on the third groove. Yeah. And that feels yeah, like you've got to thin it, but it's, it's literally where, where the mass is. If we look at, you know, the side on profile or where the kind of the mass is here, it's literally right on, yeah. right on that third groove. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> So this is bent to 50 degrees. Good. Can feel a stronger loft. Different, isn't it? Yeah. Can, it's a much, much more dense sound. Yeah. You can tell you're hitting it right in the, the kind of heart of the club now. We, we might have to back it off a little more. But kind of there's the reason why we're doing it. So that when we do catch a little bit behind it, we still kind of get to the green, we get our distance out of it. Mm -hmm. That would be, that'd be the exact reason to use more bounce right there. How often would you chip with your uh, 50 degree? Chip? Yeah. Um, not very much, no. I would basically use the 56 for any chipping, any pitch, any half swing. So one of the things I, th I think I'd like to, to look at with you is, um, is actually using the, the um, gap wedge from the set. So rather than a Vokey, if you're using it specifically for those longer shots, I think I want it to have more of the characteristics of an iron than a wedge. Mm. I, I just don't think we really need to go all the way into, um, into what the, the Vokey offers if we're not hitting full shots with it. Yeah, I, I just, I'm, I'm fearful of this, this long left. I definitely don't want to see that. I don't have any room to, uh, to move the, the club flatter because we're already a little bit toe down. So that left miss, we're going to have to control by um, the length of the shaft, the size of the grip, and in the, the, 
um, design characteristics around the head. So I think if we get you into that slightly more forgiving gap wedge that's part of the set, I, I think that does eliminate part of uh, part of why those are going that way. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But length being length, to be honest, being the biggest factor. Yeah. Just as yeah, I can like definitely it, feel that part. Like the, it's close. Yeah, super close to the yeah. hands are like almost down touching the kind of legs. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's just, it's causing you to stand too close. And you can feel like you're almost stretching for it a little bit. That'd be a nice feeling to give the arms some room to swing. Yeah, if I could be here. Yep. <laughs> yeah. But that's like reaching. Yeah, that's, that's all that is. Okay, um, so I still think 50, 56, 62. Is, is the way to go. Hmm. Um, D grind on the 56, and we're gonna go with an M grind on the, on the 62. So same thing, 60 bent to uh, 62 will give you two more degrees of bounce, um, and that'll, that'll give you those shots around the green. I, I don't wanna take that away from you. I mean, you were very, very comfortable with those shots. Um, those little kind of touch shots, feel shots, just put in there with a lot of spin. Yeah. So I definitely don't want to take that away. I know the 56 is your bread and butter. So that would be, so then the, I would start hitting those open face shots, like bunker shots and yep. stuff with the 60. Exactly. The bent 60. Yeah, the bent okay. 60, exactly. Yeah. Cool. So when you get, you know, 40 yards out and you'll probably pick, pick and choose by whether you need to fly it and just stop it with a spin or you can hop, hop and stop it. The, the sand wedge will be more likely to skip up and then with a little bit of release, you know, one of those ones, if, you, if you're ever feeling really good about your chipping, yeah. pitch with your 56. Because yeah. that little bit of release will always give you a better chance to hold the shot than if you hit it with the 62 and it's got a load of spin. Yeah. No one ever really holds a shot that comes hop, hop, and then just grabs. It's got to have that little bit of release those last two or three feet. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Love it. Cool. Okay. We're going to go into the, the, the putter fit now, guys. Um, now, this is, this is an interesting one because we don't have your clubs here, but you've said by far the putter is your favorite club in the bag. Yep. It's an old Rossa. Yep. It's an old 12, however long ago, 12 year old putter. It's a mallet, it's nice and soft. I just never changed anything yeah. about it. Yeah. I think that one might be more than, uh, more than that, that sort of era. Um, do you remember the model? I can look it up. It's, I think it's called the Rossa Monza Spider. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think I was still with TaylorMade at that time. That was that was yeah probably probably more around the kind of 12, 13, maybe even fourteen years ago. Yep. So that one's been in the bag for a while. Yep. One of the things that we don't really like to do too much of is, is change out clubs that you you really really like. Mm -hmm. So whatever we fit you into today, it'll be very interesting once you get that and compare it to your gamer. Um, how they, they stack up against one another, but um, no, it'll, it'll be cool to see. For sure. Good. Okay, wedges are all done. Guys, we're gonna head over to the putter studio. We hit so many shots. I mean, you know, more than 40% of our game is gonna be played with, with these three clubs that we've just tested with the putter. Um, we have to have that dialed in, especially when you hit it as, as, as solid and as good as we expect Marquez to be hitting it once he gets out in the course. So stay tuned for the putter fit. Uh, have you ever done a putter fit before? No, I didn't, I didn't even know that was a thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Most people don't, you're, you're not alone with that at all. Most people have no idea what to expect. I think launch angles and ball speed and spin rates are somewhat expected. Now you, you can have a feel for what's good and bad. Mm -hmm. Over there, people, it's, it's a blank canvas, which is, which is awesome. I'm excited for love it. Love it, love it. Okay, stay tuned for that. We'll see you again soon.